Hello and welcome to my Keyforge set review. In this video, part 1, we'll be looking at the House of Brobnar. Card 1 in the House of Brobnar is Anger. Anger is an action that has the playability ready and fight with a creature. A friendly creature, sorry. It gives you one amber when you play it, and in a deck based around big creatures and lots of fighting, this is quite a good card. It's also a common, so you're going to be seeing quite a lot of it. And uh, yeah, it's good. It gives you an amber when you play it, and it does what you want to be doing, which is fighting. Uh, the next card is called Barehanded. It has a playability. Put each artifact on top of its owner's deck, and it gives you an amber when you play it. So um, this is uh, good or really good or really bad. If you have lots of artifacts, it's kind of terrible. Uh, if they have lots and you have none, it's great. Uh, it gives you an amber, whatever. Um, obviously, you if you know you've got it in your deck, you can play around it a little bit by waiting until you, um, you've played it before you play your artifacts, but I don't like it. I don't like this card. It's also a rare, so you're going to feel a little bit bad if you get it. The next card is called Blood Money. It's an action. It has the play ability. Place two amber from the common supply on an enemy creature. And yeah, you're going to be basically putting it on an enemy creature, smacking that creature to bits, and then you get two amber for it. So you want, yeah, it does what you want to be doing in this deck, which is fighting. It, well, it helps with that. This is a good card. Uh, the next card is called Brothers in Battle. It's an action. It has the playability. Choose a house for the rest. Of, well, for the remainder of the turn, each friendly creature of the house may fight. It gives you one amber when you play it. And yeah, I really like this card. Um, how Keyforge works is your deck is built from three houses, um, which is three fractions. So every turn you you're going to be having you have to well you have to say what house you're going to be playing. So if you have, for example, a bunch of Mars creatures on the battlefield, and you have this in your hand, to play this you'd need to say Brobnar. But when you say Brobnar, you then can't use your Mars creatures for the turn. So what this lets you do is it lets you have a field full of, say, Mars creatures, and maybe a couple of Brobnar. And normally where you'd say, oh, well, I'll just say Mars, you can play Brobnar, play this, you get your Amber for playing it, which is great, and all of your Mars and Brobnar creatures could attack. Um, I really like this card. Uh, shame it's a rare. You're not going to be seeing it in every deck. But I do like this card. I think it's good. Burn the Stockpile is an action. It has the playability. If your opponent has 7 Amber or more, they lose 4 Amber. Uh, well, how Keyforge works is your opponent has to say when they're going to craft a T. Uh, craft a T. <laughs> Oof. Um, craft a key in the next turn. Uh, to craft a key, you need six amber. So basically, they'll probably get six or seven amber. They'll say, I'm going to craft a key. You then play this, and it basically says, no, you're not. And it shuts them down. If they don't have more than that, it's kind of a dead card. If they, they can play around it by just having six amber. I don't really like this card, but I don't know. It might play really well in the game. Who knows? Um, it's also an action. I forgot to mention that. Champion's Challenge is the next card. It's an action. And it has the playability. Destroy each enemy creature except the most powerful enemy creature. Destroy each friendly creature except the most powerful friendly creature. And ready in a fight with your remaining creature. This is great. Uh, it's board clear. It's You can engineer it so your thing is always the one that survives and always is the one that wins. Um, it can If they're really far ahead and they've got five or six creatures on the field and you have one or two. Well, you can sacrifice your creature in a way uh, kill all of theirs and basically take over the board I really like this card it's a rare you're not going to see it very often but it's, it's great I really like this card now similar to that card is Coward's End it has the playability destroy each undamaged creature gain free chains so it's sort of similar uh, in that it's sort of a board clear but um, yeah basically in your deck you're probably going to be having a lot of damage creatures because of the nature of Brobnar. You're going to be fighting a lot. You're going to be taking a lot of damage. So your creatures will be damaged most of the time. Um, it's pretty much one-sided. And they've accounted for that by making it so you get free chains. Which is sort of the handicap um, sort of mechanic of the game. Uh, this card's alright. It's a common. Um, yeah. I This is alright. I... I don't know how I feel about this card. I think it's a, I think it's good, but it, it could also do nothing, <laughs> and it can also destroy all of your stuff. If you know, so you have to play around it a little bit. But it could be really, really, really good. But then obviously you got the free chains clause, 
which can set you back a little bit, but, you know, it's, we'll see. Follow the leader as the next card. It's an action. It has the playability. For the remainder of the turn, each friendly creature may fight. Great. This is great. Um, as I said earlier, you're going to have a deck made of three houses, so you're going to have creatures on the battlefield from potentially all three houses. Um, this lets you, you know, you pick Brobnar, you play this card, suddenly all of your things can attack. Uh, it's great. I really like this card. Uh, Uncommon too, you're going to be seeing it fairly often. You know, it's it's good card. Uh, Lava Ball is the next card. Uh, it has the play ability. Deal force damage to a creature with two splash damage. So, this is a, a four, mana, uh, four mana, four damage removal, which is pretty high. So, you, you basically kill one thing for definite, pretty much. Uh, two damage splash, which I believe is either side... Or it's just one side. I think it's both sides. Um, it's also got the Lava Axe. Um, flavor text from Magic the Gathering, which is quite cool. Um, yeah, this is alright. It, it, it can one for one, or it could potentially three for one. So it's alright. It's target removal, which is always good. Um, Loot the Bodies is an action card. It has the playability. For the remainder of the turn, gain one amber for each time an enemy creature is destroyed. Uh, if you've got a big board set up, and you know you're going to be fighting this turn. This card is pretty good. Um, you know, you could potentially get five or six amber or whatever. You know, loads of amber, really. Um, especially if you play it in conjunction with Follow the Leader. Suddenly you might be wiping out all of their things and getting loads of amber. That could be a really good turn. It could decide the match. Um, if you don't have any creatures on the battlefield, it's kind of useless. Um, but yeah, basically, it's sort of, if, you, if you're in the lead or you're at an advantage on the battlefield... You can really double down on that advantage and get a lot of amber for your heavy battlefield presence, which is good. And it's a common. I like I like this card. I also like the art. Um Yeah. Oh, this card. I don't like this card. I'm just gonna say it in advance. Take that smarty pants. Um it's an action. It it gives you one amber when you play it, and it has the play ability. Still two amber if your opponent has three or more Logos cards in play. Eh. <laughs> Basically, if they've got no Logos in their deck, this is just play it and get an Amber, which is kind of sad, and it's a rare. Um, if they do play Logos, then they have to have three or more Logos cards in play. So even if they've got Logos in their deck, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to be getting that Amber. So you're still probably going to get one if they've got Logos. I don't like it. It's not very good, and it's a rare. It's, it's one of my least favourite cards, to be honest. Um, the name is also kind of... Ugh, I don't know, I don't like it. Oh well, anyway, Punch. Let's get away from that card, that's not good. Punch. Action. Play. Deal free damage to a creature, and you get an Amber. Great. Targeted removal. Uh, it's a bit cheaper than Lava Ball. A bit cheaper, sorry. Uh, a bit more common than Lava Ball, being a common. Uh, whilst Lava Ball is a rare. But uh, it gives you an Amber when you play it. It does less damage, but again, it's common. So you might get a couple of these in a deck. Yeah, good card. I like that. Uh, Relentless Assault is an action. It has the play ability. Ready and fight with up to three different friendly creatures, one at a time. Um, great. This is alright. If you play three Brobnar creatures, they normally come in summoning sick. You then play this. They can all then attack uh, in conjunction with a lot of these other, like loot the bodies. Suddenly you could be out of nowhere. You could have three things on the battlefield. They can all then attack and you get free. Like, that's, that's, a, that's an alright card. Uh, uncommon as well. Yeah, I like this. Um, Smith is an action. It has the playability. Gain two amber if you control more creatures on the opponent. And you get an amber for playing it. Uh, it's okay. You get an amber definite. You might get free. It's okay. It's it's not exciting. But it, it it's quite a good card, I imagine. You know, potentially free amber just for playing it. Nice. And you're going to be playing creatures anyway because you're a Brobnar deck. So, yeah, good on it. I like that card. Uh, Sound the Horns. It's an action. It gives you one amber when you play it, and it has the play ability. Discard cards from the top of your deck until you just either discard a Brobnar creature or run out of cards. If you discarded a Brobnar creature this way, put it into your hand. Uh, I don't like this card. It's an uncommon, so you're not going to see it all the time. Basically, it just replaces itself with another Brobnar card. Um, well, Brobnar creature, sorry. Uh, I don't like it. I don't think it's that good. Um... I believe, though, in Keyforge, 
that when you run through your deck, you shuffle your deck back in and you start again. You sort of start your deck off again. Um, there's not really like a you don't get milled, if that makes sense. You don't run out of cards and you lose the game. I think you just start your deck over again. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's how it works. So if you've actually only got two or three cards in your deck left, and you have signed the horns, you could draw your cards, you probably won't get Brobnar, then you can basically replenish your deck. So in that case, it's good. In most other cases, you're just replacing a Brobnar card with another card. Uh, it helps you cycle through your deck, I guess. But... Um, I don't know. It's okay, but I don't like it. <laughs> the next card is called Tremor. It's an action, and when you play it, you stun a creature and each of its neighbours. This is good. Uh, takes out one, definite. Potentially takes out three creatures from the, the uh, combat. This is good. I like this. Um, unguarded Camp. Yeah, Unguarded Camp. It's a play card. It has the ability... For each creature you have in excess of your opponent, a friendly creature captures one. Each creature cannot capture more than one amber this way. Uh, it gives you one amber when you play it. It's similar to... Um, similar to... Where is it? Similar to Loot the Bodies. Um, oh, You know, it could get you three or four amber. It could only get you one. Um, it might not ever get you any apart from the one where you play it. And it's an uncommon. I don't like this card that much. I do like the art. That's probably where it stops. <laughs> uh, War Song. It's an action. When you play it, for the remainder of the turn, gain one amber each time a friendly creature fights. Uh, this is great. Um, if you have two or three creatures out, you then, you know, you play this. Bam. Two or three amber. You have five or six creatures out. Bam. Five or six. This is great. It's a common. You're going to get it often. It's great. I love it. So, uh, Artifacts are the next set of cards coming up, and the first one is called Auto Cannon. It is a, uh, it is well, <laughs> it's an uh, auto cannon. Uh, when you play it, you get one amber, and it has the ability to deal one to each creature after it enters play. So basically, they play a creature, and it takes one damage. You play a creature, it takes one damage. Um, if it's in your deck, you know it's in your deck, so you can play around it. It could potentially, um. Well, it scatters damage amongst all of their things and your things, which could lead to big plays later on. Uh, just remember it's, you know, a double-sided effect. It's all right. Uh, it could be really good against really weak decks. Uh, yeah, I like this card. Uh, it's a rare, though. So you're not going to see it in every deck. The next card, though, is... I love this next card. It's called Banner of Battle. It's an artifact. It has the ability... Each friendly creature gets one power extra. Which is great. So basically... Um, you play this, all your things get buffed. That's it. Simple. It's effective. It's an anthem effect, which um, is great. They're always great. And yeah, I love it. It's a rare though, so you're not going to see it in every deck again, like I said, with the auto cannon. Um, but I'd rather have this, I believe, than the auto cannon. But who knows? Um, regular cannon now. Uh, it is an artifact and has the action ability to deal two damage to a creature. This I actually prefer to the auto cannon. You can choose what gets hit. Um, yeah, good card. Gauntlet of Command is an artifact. It's a common, so you're going to see it quite often. And it has the action ability, ready and fight for any creature. So basically, this kind of gives one of your creatures haste to turn. Or charge, or... I don't know if there's any other names for it from other card games, but... You play a creature, it's summoning sick, you use the Gauntlet of Command, it can then attack. This is great, it's what you want to be doing. You can suddenly make big plays out of nowhere. I like this card, and that common, good. And the art's kind of cool. <laughs> it's a little bit thanos -y, but not really. Um, Iron Obelisk. It, I oh my god, I love this card. It's an artifact. Your opponent keys cost plus one for each friendly damage Brobnar creature. It's a rare, which kind of sucks. But it's great. If you've got two or three creatures out and they're damaged, which they probably will be because you're going to be fighting a lot, their keys could cost eight, nine, ten amber to craft. Right? This really sets them back. Now... You know, all other things being equal, this is great. It sets them behind. Whatever, you know, if everything else is equal, it's a mirror matchup, say, but you've got this out, they're going to be behind. This is a great card. I like this card. Um, your stuff is always going to be damaged, probably, in, in a uh, auto cannon deck. This is going to be a, a lovely combination, but in a regular uh, Brobnar deck, this is a good card. 
The next card is called Mighty Javelin. It's an artifact. It gives you one amber when you play it, and it has the Omni ability. Sacrifice Mighty Javelin, deal four damage to a creature. This is all right. Think of it as deal four damage, gain an amber. Um, you know, it's removal and amber gain. It's all right. Pile of Skulls, don't like this card. I don't know why. Each time an enemy creature is destroyed during your turn, a friendly creature captures one. Um... Hmm. No, I do like this card actually. I, I, I read it wrong the first time, I think. Um, yeah, each time they have basically everything on their, on their side sort of got like a little bounty. When you kill it, you get an amber. This is this is good actually. I like this card. Yeah, you're going to be doing a lot of fighting. You're going to be taking a lot of skulls. Um, and yeah, you get amber for it, which accelerates your key generation, which is what you want to be doing. Screech from. I always mess that up. Screech bomb. Artifact, Omni, Sacrifice, Screech Bomb, your opponent loses two Amber. Don't like it. Uh, it doesn't do enough for me. Um, yeah, it's uncommon as well, so it's going to feel a little bit worse when you have it in your deck. But no, I don't like it. Um, it's probably good, statistically speaking, from a from a you know numbers and numerical standpoint and from a purely you know chances of winning standpoint. It's probably a good card because it sets them back. But I just don't like it. It doesn't seem fun. It doesn't seem like it does enough to be a fun card. But it's probably a good card, if that makes sense. Um, War Chest, or The War Chest, is an artifact. It has the action ability. Gain one amber for each enemy creature that was destroyed in a fight this turn. Um, this is good. Uh, you're going to be doing a lot of fighting, as I mentioned before. Um, paired with Pile of Skulls, you're just going to be getting a ton of um amber from winning fights which is what you're gonna be doing i like that i like that little combo um yeah i like it bilgum avalanche is the first creature we'll be looking at and uh oh yeah she's quite good she's a five attack no armor after you forge a key deal two damage to each enemy creature now she's a rare so you're not going to get her very often um but yeah she's good she can potentially clear their entire board um you know, she sets their entire board back a bit, you know. Causing all of that damage is useful because it means your creatures are more likely to win fights. You're going to be doing a lot of fights anyway because you're Brobnar. I like this card. If you have multiples by some miracle, because it's a rare, um, wow, you, you can really get ahead. If you have two of these down, you craft a key as four damage to everything they've got. That's, whew, that's magical Christmas land right there. <laughs> that's, but that's good. Um Voldir is the next creature. It's six attack, no armor. It has the ability Voldir deals two damage when attacking an enemy creature on the flank. So the flanks are the creatures on either side. Um, and yeah, uh, this is quite an interesting card because it plays with the location of the creatures. And if your opponent messes that up, you can really exploit that and cause them some serious harm. Uh, it's already got six attack as well, so it's going to be doing a lot of damage. Uh, I like this card. Bumpsy, oh, terrible name, <laughs> is a creature with five attack, no armor. And when you play it, your opponent loses one. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is just a creature who sets them back slightly. And he's quite a big lad. I like this guy. Uh, terrible name, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> the next card is called Earthshaker. It uh, is a creature. It has seven attack. No armor and has the playability to destroy each creature with power for real lower. So this really punishes decks with low creature power. Um, it won't punish mo you because a lot of your creatures, as you've seen with Bumpsy, with Valder, uh, with Earthshaker himself, have more than free attack. So more often than not, it's going to be a very one-sided uh, board clear or creature destruction. Obviously, you've got to bear in mind your other creatures from your other houses in your deck but i like this card uh at uncommon you're not going to see it in every deck but i think it's pretty good um fire spitter is next he's a creature with great art uh five attack one armor which is unusual for this uh <laughs> this house uh before fight deal one damage to each enemy creature yeah i like this um you know pet it, it's like auto cannon but on a creature uh it can trigger multiple times so if he doesn't get destroyed over the course of a few turns he can deal 
one, two, three, you know, he can deal multiple damage to all of their creatures. It, it, it's really good. Multiples of this would be really good as well. If you have three of these on the field by some miracle, suddenly you can be, you know, dealing free damage to everything they've got before you even fight. So I really like this card. It's really, really good. Um, and a common as well. I really like that. Ganga Chieftain, or Ganga Chieftain. Uh... Ganga Chieftain. God, I can never say that word. Uh, five attack, zero armor. It's a giant with the play ability. You may ready and fight with a neighboring creature. So you play down... Uh, you play down this guy first, I believe. That's how you do it. Then you play down another creature. Then you can... Oh, well, no, obviously, because this guy comes in summoning so, Um So you play... Okay, I've got it. You play down a creature, let's say Fire Spitter. You then play Ganga Chieftain next to him, then your Fire Speaker can fight this turn. Okay, yeah, I like this. It, it's it's alright. Um, grenade Snib. <laughs> cool name. Um, cool art as well, actually. Uh, that is a that is a boomy goblin. Um, it has two attack and no armor. He's very fragile. And when he's destroyed, which he will be very quickly, your opponent loses two armor. So this could potentially kill a creature. It definitely gets you two armor. It's all right. The art's kind of nice. Um, it's an uncommon though, so you're not going to see it every deck. It's okay. It doesn't really do what you want to be doing in a Brobnar deck, which is big creatures. But it just sets them back, which is always good. Um, Headhunter. Wow, this guy looks like a... Uh, oof, there's a lot going on with him. Uh, he's five attack, no armor, fight, gain one amber. This is all right. You're going to be fighting every turn with him. You basically get um, amber every turn. If he lives more than one turn, you might get two or three amber from him. Yep, common, great. Next is Hebe the Huge, or Hebe the Huge. Um, huge. He has six attack. He is... A giant knight, which is kind of cool. He has the play ability, deal two damage to each other undamaged creature. So basically this really punishes creatures that haven't been in fights, which will probably be your opponent's creatures. Obviously yours are going to be in fights all the time because you're Brobnas, what you want to be doing. Um, can kill your own stuff, which is not good, or can damage your own stuff, which is not good, but chances are he's going to damage a lot of your enemy's stuff. Um, I like it. Um, Kelfi Dragon is next. It's got twelve attack. Woo. No, uh, no armor. Uh, it has the Kelfi Dragon cannot be played unless you have seven amber or more. So, obviously, it's playing into the trope that dragons like treasure and dragons like gold and treasure hoards. Um, so you're you're really restricted on when you can play him. But if you do get uh, seven amber and you play him you're going to be in a really good position because he's going to be really hard to destroy um, yeah it has the fight and reap ability fight and reap sorry um, gain one amber deal five damage to a creature yeah that's this guy if you get him out or get her out or get them out um, you're going to be doing you're going to be probably winning once you get your Kelfi dragon out or Khalifi dragon oh wow i really messed that up Khalifi dragon yeah i didn't see that for that eye yeah Khalifi dragon once you get that out you're probably going to win uh it's rare though so don't expect it in every deck but when you do get it be happy it's a nice card king of the crag seven attack no armor each enemy brobnar creature gets minus two power this is good in a mirror matchup, which you know you're probably gonna face in every two or three games, you get a little buff. Um, obviously, they might have it as well, but it's a rare, so they might not. This is a good card. In some decks, it won't do anything, or in some matchups, it won't do anything, and it's just a seven attack creature. In that case, it's not great. But if you're against Brobnar, it's a uh, quite a good card. Crump, six attack creature. After an enemy creature is destroyed fighting Crump, its loot its controller loses one amber. Um Yeah. Alright, this is okay. Again, it's a common, so it's about what you'd expect from a common. It basically gets one or two amber probably over the course of its life. Um but yeah, it's alright. <laughs> it's good. But it's not fun. It's not exciting. His name is cool. He's called Crump. That's all right. 
Lomir Flamefist, five attack creature. He has the play ability. If your opponent has seven amber or more, they lose two amber. If they don't have seven amber or more, they don't lose that. And he's just a five attack, no armor guy. If they do, eh, he's a right. He sets them back. It can really mess up their key making plans, uh, key forging plans even. Um, if they are a problem our deck and they have a Kel uh, Khalifi Dragon coming soon, you play this, they then can't play it. It makes them feel sad. It's all right. It's not great. It's not terrible. It's situational. But in a situation where you can play him, he's good. Um, Looter Goblin. Elusive. Oh, sorry. Looter Goblin is a creature. It has two attack and no armor. It has the ability Elusive. The first time this creature is attacked each turn, no damage is dealt. Which is quite good, really. Um, Reap. For the remainder of the turn, gain one amber each time an enemy creature is destroyed. So... You need two things to attack him, um, which is good. Basically, he, he he forces the enemy to focus on him. He has the reap ability for the remainder of the turn. Gain one at each turn enemy creature destroyed. This is all right. He's a pile of skulls on a creature, and he needs... He's good. I actually quite like this. It's deceptive. I think he'll be a lot better than he looks on the face of it. Um, it requires your opponent to really focus on him. If they don't, they're going to get punished for it. Mugwump. <laughs> Great. Six attack, no armor, is a giant with, after an enemy creature is destroyed fighting Mugwump, fully heal Mugwump and give it a plus one power counter. Brilliant. This is fantastic. Um, he can really snowball out of control. You're going to be destroying a lot of creatures because he's got high attack. No armor, so he's going to take damage. Um, but yeah, I really like this card. I really like this card. Shame he's a rare. You're not going to get him in every deck. When you do get him, you're going to I think you're going to love playing him. He's going to be one of your favourite cards in the deck. I like him. Next card is a creature called Pingle Who Annoys. Ooh. It's like his name was made in the name create a random generator thing. Um, two attack. Elusive. The first time uh, this creature attacked each turn. No damage is dealt. Similar to Looter Goblin. It must be a goblin theme. Deal one damage to each enemy creature after it enters play. So this is auto cannon. Uh, but one-sided it only targets their things multiples of this guy great just having one of him is kind of great uh, Yeah, he's all right. He's like a little supporter guy who sits in the side and just pings at their things This is all right. He does look annoying <laughs> The next creature is called rock hurling giant. It is a six attack. No armor creature During your turn each time you discard a problem card from your hand you may deal four damage to a creature this could be potentially massive um, if you discard all Brawlblad cards from your hand. Um, you could board clear. Uh, this is great. I really like this card. Um, yeah, nothing more to add. I really like this card. It's good. Um, you can decide, I believe, you know how much you do with it. You could potentially deal up to six lots of four damage. Um, I don't know if it's 4 damage to the same creature each time, or if it's 4 damage to separate creatures. If it's separate creatures, it's perfect. If it's the same one, it's, it's gonna be, you're, you're going to be overkilling the heck out of a, a creature. But it, it's alright. Uh, no, sorry. Really good. I really like this card. Um, it's, but it's rare. Uh, yeah, good card. Rogue Ogre. Rogue. Uh, <laughs> 6 attack, no armor. At the end of your turn, if you played exactly 1 card this turn, Rogue Ogre heals 2 damage and captures 1. That's not great at all oh no that's really bad basically it forces you to play really limitingly that's not english uh but it plays you really conservatively um i don't like it it makes you slow down and the reward isn't great enough um no i don't like this card and at a rare it's that's a terrible card i'm sorry i don't like that uh smash or smash five attack uh, creature, when you play and you stun a creature, this is alright, standard, just standard, it's good, 5 attack, beefy, no armour, eh, just play, stun a creature, I like it, Tireless Crocag, 7 attack, no armour, he cannot reap, you may use Tireless Crocag as it, if it belonged to the active house, so you say, uh, Dis, or you say Miles, or you say the Untamed, and he can attack still, which is kind of cool. Uh, if your opponent has no creatures in play, destroy Tyler's Crocag. 
So if they want to get rid of him, they've either got to defeat him through battle or have a really slow turn. Or basically, if they've got no creatures in play, you're in a good spot anyway. So you don't really mind if he dies because you've probably got two or three or four or five other creatures on the battlefield and you're already at a really big advantage. So I like this guy. Uh, he's a rare. <sighs> Cannot reap, but you can use him if you belong to active host. Basically, you can use him every turn, which is great. Uh, troll. Eight attack. <sighs> uh, no armor. Reap deal. Uh, troll heals free damage. Yeah. Good card. Common. Um, I like it. Good card. Cool art. <laughs> little archer in the uh, arc getting smashed and the little poor guy getting flung away. Yeah, this is a cool card. Uh, last creature, War Drummer. Free attack, no armor. He's a goblin and he has the play ability. Return each friendly, uh, reach each other friendly problem like creature to your hand. It's common. Um, ooh, if you have a lot of play cards, so uh, a lot of creatures that do things when they come into play, this card's good. If you don't, it doesn't really do much. Um, if you know you've got a board clear coming up, which there is a quite a few in Brobnar, um, you can play this, get all your things back, board clear, um, and then you still have all your things safe, whereas all of the opponent's things will be destroyed, probably. Uh, it's alright, it's situational. Uh, yeah, I... This card is alright. At common, it's quite good. It can let you do some crazy things. Blood of Titans is the first upgrade we'll be looking at. It gives you plus one amber when you play it, and this creature gets plus five power. Whoa! Put that on a troll, and you've got a 13 attack troll. Put it on one of your goblins, and you've got an eight attack goblin or a seven attack goblin. I like this card. Um, you get an amber for playing it, which is always good, and it buffs your stuff up. I like it. Um, it can really... In a Brobnar deck, it's, it's a good card. Uncommon as well, you're going to be getting a fair few of them. I like it. Phoenix Heart. Upgrade. This creature gains destroyed. Return this creature to its owner's hand and deal free damage to each creature in play. Ooh, each creature in play. Wow, this is cool, actually. So basically, um, you get your card back and you potentially board clear or you deal a lot of damage which has a lot of synergy with other Brobnar cards. Uh, I like this card. Shame it's a rare. I, I can see why it's a rare. Uh, it's, re you know, you can bring your stuff back uh, multiple times a turn. I like it. Um, shame you don't get the upgrade card back and you can keep doing it over and over again. I think that'd be too powerful. I like this card. And the last card in the Brobnar house is Yo Mama Mastery. Um, it's an upgrade. It gives you plus am one amber when you play it. And this creature gains taunt. Play When you play it, you fully heal this creature. Oh, we're ending with like a bit of a meh whimper. Uh, it's a rare, so uh, you're not going to come across it very often. Um, if you have something like Blood of Titans already on one of your creatures... Or you have a really powerful Mugwump out, who's maybe up to 7 or 8 or 9 attack. Uh, he's maybe killed 2 or 3 things. You then play your Mama Mastery on him. Uh, heal him back up. Make him have Taunt. He's going to be getting... He's going to be absorbing a lot of damage, getting bigger each time. Uh, apart from the name, this card is deceptively pretty good, I believe. Um, and yeah... That brings us to the end of the Brobnar house. Um, I'm, I quite like that house, actually. It's uh, pretty interesting. Very, pretty cool faction. A lot of combat. I can see why it's very combat-themed, or how it can be very combat-themed. Um, a lot of big creatures, a lot of damage, a lot of destroy, um, a lot of ways to gain, uh, gain a lot of amber from fights. Uh, yeah, I quite like this house. Uh, and I quite like a bunch of the cards in it. I like a lot of the commons, which is actually quite good. Um, I think the commons make this quite a, a competitive uh, house. You've got a lot of big creatures, and creatures are always going to be doing a lot of stuff. Yes. So that's Brobna, the first house out of the seven we'll be looking at. Uh, thank you for watching and listening to my video. Uh, please let me know what you think of Brobna in the comments down below. Um, Subscribe 
if you want to subscribe and you want to see more content about Keyforge or other card games, I'll be doing set reviews for the upcoming Pokemon sets, Magic the Gathering sets, maybe Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, if I can get back into it, but I'll be definitely doing Keyforge. So look out for the next uh, six Keyforge videos looking at the other houses. And yeah, let me know what cards you like from this house, what cards you're excited to play, uh, what you thought of my opinions, uh, where was I wrong, where was I right, and yeah, what could I do to improve these videos? Leave everything in the comments and let me know. Subscribe, like, and I'll see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Yeah.